Watching Obi Toppin, you certainly see an intriguing skill set. You see a guy who might very well be in an NBA slam dunk contest someday. And you hear the name Amare Stoudemire thrown out there as a comparison from time to time. And it's easy to see with the kind of freakish athletic ability that Toppin does possess. But is he really worthy of a top five pick? Again, you see at times his ability to just overpower, especially smaller defenders with quick little crab dribbles and reach and explode on them. Despite being 6'8", 6'9", he plays much more athletic than that. But the size certainly can be an issue. Can a 6'8", 6'9", guy defend NBA five men? Does he have the size and length to really play that five position at all in the NBA? If he's getting abused by Kansas big men's, can he compete nightly against the Drummonds and Gobert's and Whitesides and all the size and length that's in the NBA at that five spot? Let's take a deep dive into Obi Topin's game and see exactly how I think the Dayton sophomore will project at the next level. First of all, rim running, rebounding, and rolling. A great way to carve out a role very easily if you're a big man in the NBA. And he does do those things pretty well. Great lob guy, always a threat, plays above the rim. Again, runs the rim hard for the most part. Pretty good hustle player, especially offensively. He'll cut occasionally from the weak side. He has a pretty good motor, knows where to be. And again, plays above the rim despite his size. Decent offensive rebounder. Active, especially on the offensive end. And then he can certainly set a good screen, as he does here, and has a good knack for knowing when to separate and explode up at the rim, where, again, he's a pretty ferocious finisher at times. He has the ability, certainly, to both pop and space, and then go second side actions and roll. That's the way the NBA is played today, moving the ball side to side, and he's very good at that. He's a very smart offensive player, facilitates ball movement, and then when he gets these kind of backside cleared out rolls, that's when, again, you just throw the ball up and he's going to get it, and you see that kind of freakish lob roll ability. As far as his shot, 70% free throw shooter, certainly capable there, decent form. Overall, his three... Tends to get sped up at times, especially when he's contested quickly. Little inconsistent. 39%, certainly great numbers, but he only took about three a game. And you can see at times, not the most confident shooter out there, but he's certainly going to have to take that trail shot a ton in the NBA. And he does have that ability to be a pop and space big. So he does remind me in a way of certainly the skill set that John Collins has that Markeith Morris has, a little bit of Mike Scott. Again, he's pretty consistent with his form. He has a good follow-through. He has good arc, good rotation on the ball. This is what I think his main role will be offensively in today's NBA, and it's valuable. Again, when you have a four-man who can set these kind of quick step-ups and space out quickly and knock down threes behind the line, that's important. That provides that kind of spacing that offensive ne offenses need. But again, at times, he's a little reluctant out there. This has got to be a shot every time. And then when he gets the ball back, it doesn't have the gr best on-ball skills. doesn't have the best handle. So when I see some of these Sean Marion-type comparisons, like a guy that could maybe play some three in the NBA, that I don't see. I don't see a guy with a tremendous handle, the ability to take guys really off the dribble himself himself. What he can do is occasionally certainly post up smaller defenders. Loves this fake dribble handoff to get himself down there. But then what you see is against defenders with good size, with a little bit of girth, he really kind of struggles to move them. He doesn't have great lower body strength himself. He's, you know, 6'9-ish, 220 with high shoulders, but look how much he ends up getting pushed out here. That doesn't suggest to me a guy that's going to be getting a ton of post catches in the NBA, again, where that size advantage is going to be negated. Again, against a bigger defender here, really struggles to move him at all with the crab dribble, ends up traveling ultimately. Smaller defenders get a guard switched onto him like here, no problem. You can lob it up to him at the rim, and he can certainly finish that. 
weaker, softer defenders. No offense, like GW tried to throw at him. He doesn't have a huge problem scoring on them in the post. But again, I'm just not sure that that's going to be a huge part of his game at the next level. Certainly occasionally at the four spot, but not a ton of it. Ball movement is probably his best asset to me. Best thing that he uh, uniquely brings to that position. Again, loves that fake handoff action, and then has a really good feel for passing, especially out of the post. Sees two defenders come at him, makes the extra pass, leading to the hockey assist three. He'll get a lot of those at the next level. Look at this one here, how he almost invites, baits the double team, fakes the pass out, then splits the double team, throws a beautiful no-look dime to the corner, celebrates it a little early, but a very nice look. A high IQ guy. Again, coaches love these kind of bigs who can pop and then put the ball down, occasionally make plays. Like I said, he's not a huge change of direction guy. He's not going to take a ton of dribbles. He's not a superstar, but he can drive and kick and make plays for teammates. High IQ in the vein of like a, you know, Jared Dudley. And if you think that's terribly disrespectful, you're thinking about Jared Dudley right now instead of Jared Dudley, who was a damn good player in Phoenix and throughout his NBA career and had a ton of value as a really smart, high IQ offensive player, in particular ball mover, uh, who does a lot of things well. Look at this pass here. Again, he's like, imagine Boris Diaw with a lot more athleticism and quickness. Just the way he sees these passes cross court, to flip this one-handed opposite corner on a dime right in the shooting pocket. That's a beautiful, beautiful pass. Or how about this one that he's going to throw with his off hand this time. Again, perfectly on a dime. He's great at just reading defense, where it's tilting in from, who's helping off just a little bit, and finds those cross-court assists very easily. Again, doesn't put the ball down as much, but on his occasional forays to the rim, has good vision, able to make extra passes like that that are pretty high-level reads. And then again, we see the fake handoff to get himself a little offense this time in the post with a beautiful little half spin. And you see that quick, explosive ability that, again, reminds you a little bit of Amare in a way. Shocker, fake handoff, and then again, always has his head up, always is thinking extra pass. Unselfish, high IQ basketball player. Defensively, more of a mixed bag. He is going to get sealed pretty deep a lot. Here he gets away with the strip steal, but this is the biggest issue and why I think he's not going to be able to play very much five at all in the NBA. Imagine, again, you're going up now the Embiid's, the Vucevic's, the really strong bigs who will seal you deep under the basket. He routinely gets buried way, way underneath and provides very little resistance. Again, Amare, like I said, was 6'10", but he was 240, 245, jacked, really strong, immovable guy down there. Toppin is more frequently a guy who's very movable, just gets beat very quickly, way too easily, way too uh, little resistance in the post there. Off the dribble, off pick and pop type situations, he's not great at guarding those either, despite it being a pretty big part of his game offensively. If he doesn't time out, time that block well, he's not providing much resistance at the rim. Another reason I think He'll struggle to be a five at the next level, especially defensively. Here, just watch him. I mean, does that look like a five in today's NBA, the way you see rim protectors coming over? To me, if anything, he looks like, you know, 6'9". I'm not sure I'm buying that. He might be 6'8 at best. Just kind of seems small in there. It's kind of hard to describe. But he did play some five a day and does have good shot blocking instincts, especially with that left hand. He will get a decent amount of them. Because, again, he has a good feel. He's high IQ. He has pretty good timing on those blocks in particular. So can he occasionally come over and be a solid help defender, rim protector? Yes, but he's going to have to be even more locked in at the next level. And, in my opinion, at least put on a little bit more uh, size and muscle. Because, once again, 
you can only rely on that shot blocking so much. You have to be able in the NBA to get down in a better stance right here, resist, defend the basketball, cut off that drive instead of always just trying to challenge things at the rim, especially at that size. In terms of pick and roll defense, he has the ability to get out, hedge, explode out to a reroute and get back to his man. That's a good sign. He also occasionally uh, does, though, get beat, like where he's supposed to cut off the baseline right here and has that foot attacked, where you see a bit of the slower-footed uh, part of him that's not quite as intriguing. But here you see him playing in that drop defense that's pretty uh, – standard in today's NBA where he does a pretty good job, again, against the slower type bigs. He'll occasionally get some poke steals by using his IQ. He'll also bait you into some passes or just kind of gamble and find his way into some steals with occasionally quick closing speed to make plays like that. Overall, pretty high on Obi. Make sure you subscribe, uh, especially to patreon.com slash scout with Brian. I'll be releasing my full draft grades, big board, uh, more comparisons and details on what I think of him at the next level. Again, thumb up, subscribe, a lot more coming soon. Appreciate you watching.